we just lost uh, the reg we jammed on before with the uh, the eight ten suited and the king five suited. Change key was eliminated after jamming with ace four suited. It was a pretty standard sort of jam. Uh, and you run into jacks. You can see that here. This guy's kind of tight. I kind of wanted the three bet, but he's a bit tight. Too bad, so sad. Good for us, though. We move up and pay. And it's pretty good when you're short like this for, you know, Rob Baxter just to get all the chips, you know. Um, it just gives us a better chance of moving up in pay. Uh, if we were a big stack, you know, I don't mind keeping the stacks more level. Pretty close between raising and jamming here, but I think I will just go with the jam option. Um, the thing that pushes me over the line is the ICM. I kind of wanted to uh, three bet there. It's a little bit annoying because the the big blind is quite short. Makes it a bit awkward. I'd have to three bet fold to him with the trashy hand I had. But yeah, just going back to the ace king. Uh, we only have around m6. So we're going to be jamming there a fair bit. So it's not like... Um, it's not like we're not going to get called by by worse. Uh, but, you know, there is a bubble factor to consider. So, But I think Ace-Jack, Ace-Queen still calling. Ace-10 suited is probably going to call. Uh, Ace-10 off even. Ace-9 suited would be in a tough spot. And a bunch of pairs, obviously. Uh, if we min-raise, we do get jammed on maybe a little bit more. But I still think it looks kind of strong. Min-raising into a very short stack with a short stack ourselves. Um... So, the thing that uh, did sort of tip the scales for me, though, was the fact that um, the ICM, you know, if we if we raise and Obradovich on the, you know, button jams, um, I guess he's going to be doing it with enough hands that we dominate, actually. So, it's not such a big problem. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, if he jams deuces or something like that, I mean, it's actually really bad for us uh, because now we're flipping for our tournament life. 50% uh, of the time we'll bust right then and there. And uh, that's not a good thing when there's pay jumps, you know, final table, um, survival. And especially, well, I shouldn't say especially, but there's only two players that are in that sort of, you know, arson, Obradovich and don't tilt on me. Uh, we're all kind of short. The other guys are all chipped up. Uh, White Rabido's kind of in the middle. Get a walk, that's always good. So we're just, pre pre uh, just tuning in. Doing a couple of hands. We've had the... Uh, <laughs> three, four. Tony tanked and then three X's. Wow. <laughs> That's so sick. He went by position. Uh, raise first ends. I'm going to fold. I, I don't know about. I don't know too much about Tony. I don't know too much about Big Tony, but he's going to have to shark scope his ass. Uh, well, this is, a, I think, just an easy get-in down here. Um, you know, I mean, the the small bone can have a pretty wide range still. He's, he's only fairly short. Um, as it is, we're in a flip. So, four ball, please. Thank you. Ask, ah, ask and you shall receive... But I forgot to say no six on the river. That was the problem there. 
But yeah, I think he can have any pair and a lot of hands we dominate. The button player is stealing a lot. He can be wide, he's button. Uh, the other guy is... Uh... Well, I mean, actually, he's not that shallow, is he? I mean, he's still M10, so I, I guess... I guess he's not going to have that many hands we beat. Uh, but he's going to have a lot of small pairs. Maybe some smaller races. Uh, maybe some king-queens. So it does really look pairish when he does that that raise. But I don't think he's going to do it with 10s or, or higher. I mean, 10s he might. I think 9s is sort of the hand where he does that. Where he doesn't really care if he doesn't get action. But I think aces, kings, queens. And probably jacks and 10s. Um, you know, he's going to... Uh, Probably be more inclined to try and get a little bit of action with those. Just gonna put the heat on, guys. Sorry if the sound goes a bit queasy, queasy, queasy. Yeah, so again, just going to shove it in M6 this time. We had the King 3 before. We jammed on the late position player, stealing. We had the A10. Uh, we had a nice squeeze earlier with ace five. Uh, I think I will fault this one. I think yeah, yeah we can. Just gonna jam bottom left. Pretty close there. Probably could have opened it. So yeah, we've just been maintaining the aggression, just trying to uh, maintain our stack really. We haven't really had any big double ups, uh, so we've just had to just uh, battle it out, hand to hand combat. And this is a pretty good spot again here, we've got uh, aggressive openers behind us. And uh, it's a pretty ideal spot, actually. So you can go the beans and the think fold by Rabido. Uh, here he's opening pretty wide from the cutoff there, and uh, the ICM is pretty bad for him because we can uh, virtually eliminate him. Uh, but uh, uh, and a uh, very good player, very ICM aware, so. This guy's 3xing again. This is really annoying uh, because if he folds, we can just shove on Obradovic. Uh, and I almost jammed him before, but I think uh, he's stealing quite a bit. But the Queen 2 is just not quite probably not quite comfortable with it. And uh, he's doing what he should be doing with that stack. And uh, let's see what he does. So, whoa, wow, so he actually had sevens at time. 
and pretty hard to fold to that guy's stack size. It's a little bit annoying for us, but poker own you should jam on don't tilt me here, I think, with a pretty wide range. Um And uh, we managed to lose another one. Just going to try and raise it a little bit larger here, I think. Just to try to uh, deter three bets a little bit more. One, two, three, four, six. Uh, I'm going to make a tight fold here. This guy's only opening 9% from early. Uh, we've got uh, a stack size where we can't really speculate. Um, having said that, the pot odds are quite tempting. But I did decide to let it go. It's a pretty close spot. Uh, but 2.5x, tight player early, uh, only M9. It's pretty marginal. This one's a little bit clearer. Two, four, five. We just shove this in, uh, and this one as well. I think I will call, but it's it's definitely uh, time to flop the nuts. Imagine we had a fold of that, and now saw this flop. We'd just be crying, wouldn't we? We'd be sad. <laughs> so uh, I mean. I think we're just going to bet here. Uh, well, I don't. If we call, there's going to be 16 and 28. Hmm. Sixteen and thirteen is twenty-nine. Yeah, I think I will raise now. Um, I was going to call, it's pretty close, you can definitely call, but the problem is, is that, uh, I mean, we already look a pretty bluffy, you know, I mean, the flop's gone check, 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 and he's bet turn, so it's not like we have to have the nuts when we raise, uh, and at the same time, he might have a draw like king 10 or spades or something like that, and so with that in mind, uh, I think it's better to... To, to, to try to build the pot on the turn. Um, I think I might call here. It's kind of close. So, wow, I thought I actually had Queen King there. And I don't know why I was... Uh, so I was seeing Queen King and then I thought we had flopped big time. So, I mean, once he checks, I'm just going to have to stab. And we're going to have to stab here, too. This probably doesn't need to be quite that big. And uh, here we can just get the beans in. Uh, so... I was going to call that as a chop top left. When I saw the flop, I'm like, chop. <laughs> uh, I think this guy hasn't been that loose uh, he could have 7-8 and that sort of thing I don't know if we can barrel him off that uh, I mean we could bet turn and river and try if he's got a queen he's not folding obviously I don't know how often he calls flop with ace high that's the, one of the problems is I don't know how often he's calling flop with like a6 and stuff like that. I mean, on this board, it's a pretty bad board to... F well, not a bad board to float, but just... This particular player, I think, is... Uh, 
in the ice with the ICM and against a bigger stack, and we've been pretty aggressive. I just don't think he's going to float try floats on us. Uh, so I feel like he's going to have a seven or an eight or a queen here a lot or a flush draw. And we do only have jack high, so I'm uh, not going to try and check raise or do anything too fancy there, but. Yeah, but going back to that hand before, um, it, uh, I think it made a lot of sense just to raise turn. I mean, the SPR is close to one on the river anyway, if we had have just called. Uh, so, you know, I mean, in this situation, it's probably going to go in with when he's got a queen on the river anyway. But the problem is, imagine he's got king 10 and, uh, if he's got king 10, he's not folding turn. If he's got spades, he's not folding to a turn raise. If he's got a queen, he's not folding to a turn raise. If he's got a jack, he's probably not folding to a turn raise. Uh, once the flop goes check, 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 and we're just in the big blind. Uh, and so everything's pretty much just calling. The only hands we really fold there is just a like a wild, like ace two suited stab. Um, but I don't think this player's calling with that sort of hand from small blind. Maybe he folds like eight, nine suited and stuff like that. If we raise turn, maybe. Uh, ace 10 would be a double belly. He's not folding that either. So he's just got all these hands he can have that are just not folding. But at the same time, if we call the turn, well, the river might either A, bring a scare card. Uh, I think I'm just going to raise here. The uh, river either might bring a scare card and uh, he might decide not to put any more money in the pot or he might slow down uh, or he might even had a hand where he would have given us action if we raised turn but once the scare card comes he decides to. I mean imagine the river was like a, a, a nine of spades and he had uh, you know king jack. I mean he might just decide he's going to you know, check fold um, or at least check decide and then when we bet to sort of come up with a fold and even in that instance if we do bet we're not going to be able to bet very big to get value from from his weaker hands um, so as much as i think sometimes when you you're in position you can trap trap a little bit uh you can be a little bit trappy i think in that instance uh, it made a lot of sense just because of the the texture of the board that there was going to be a lot of hands that can call uh, and at the same time, you know, we do want to charge him a little bit because a, a lot of hands that he might have, uh, you know, he could have equity, he could have king, ten of spades. I mean, he could have tons of outs. Uh, and when we raise turn, I mean, he might even just shove that in. But if he does call, at least we charge him a little bit for it. Um, it's a pretty close spot here. I think I will raise again. Uh, this, this raise is, uh, I mean, these two here, are, are going to jam on us some of the time, but I mean, these guys are pretty short, and it's a little bit hard for these guys to three bet because if this guy makes it say 12.5 and this guy's jam, uh, he probably can't fold. Uh, so it, it actually almost looks like he's going for a size where uh, he's going for a size where if this this guy's jam, well, if this guy jams, maybe he can fold. Um, maybe I mean it's 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 possible, but he has to call off versus him. Um, or he's just got the nuts. But I don't think... Well, I'm going to fold here. 6,000. 21. I'm probably not quite folding uh, for that amount. But it's really close because of the ICM. And uh, I'll explain a bit more about that in a moment. I actually think a lot of his, if he is a three betting light, uh, I mean, a lot of his light three bets probably contained an ace. Um, what have we got here? Like M6, 12, 18, 24, 30. And ace three is only 26. We can't actually jam that. I thought maybe we could. It's all right. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. 6, 7, 20. Yeah. Kind of pretty close, but we can't really. Uh, yeah, so just coming back to 4, 5, 6. Sorry, guys, just got hands everywhere here. Uh, 
Yeah, this guy I've got marked as a fish, so it's a bit dangerous, I think, to jam there, but I was pretty close with it. Uh, yeah, so just coming back to that hand, uh, a lot of, I think, a mistake that players make uh, is that they defend wide against the big stack stealing with medium to shortish stacks uh, on final tables. Uh, and ICM really you know, tells us that we shouldn't be doing that because it's going to, anytime you defend wide, you're, you've got it, you putting yourself in a high variance situation. Uh, and when we had the 9, 10 and flop the nuts before, you know, what happens if flop comes jack 9, 5, you know, or king 10, 2? You know, uh, we're going to be giving some action most of the time and we can't afford to be. I mean, we're putting ourselves in tough spots against players, uh, you know, if they have chips that can afford to push us around. Uh, and we can't really, uh, we don't want to uh, put ourselves in that type of situation. And I, I think a lot of a mistake that even regs make is they see, oh, he's a big stack, so he's opening pretty wide, so I'm just going to call really wide here and defend really wide. Uh, but you're actually, uh, you're actually hurting your, yourself, your ICM. Uh, yes, you will get yourself in a position where you can get chips more often, but at the same time, you're going to be busting out a lot more when, you know, you flop comes you know two five nine you've defended with eight nine and your opponent's got you know queen nine and you just you flop top bear and you goes in and you you're out uh and so you do have to be careful of that same sort of thing i think happens with uh the same sort of thing happens with calling four bits three and four bits uh, sorry, calling three bets, really, uh, like we had before. Uh, our opponent three bet us, and let's just see what happens here. Will White Rubido get some chips back? Yes, he will. Um... I just lost my train of thought there. I'm actually uh, actually know White Rubito fairly well. Had a drink with him in Korea. Nice guy and top player. Wow, that's annoying. That was our jam. He stole it from us. I think I'm going to fold. Uh, only because it's the uh, 13 of 17. You know, if it was regular play, I would actually probably call just because we're only M. 12, 24, 36, any M4. I mean, we almost can still call. Any M4. Wow. So gross. He's got sevens just so often here. No. No, no, no. Give me my cards back. I want more time to think about this. <laughs> I think we can, uh, well, I thought I, if White Rubito raises button there with 3-bet, I think he's going to 4-bet pretty light. Uh, yeah, that's a pretty annoying because, uh, well, I mean, we get aces. feel better. I feel better. Don't be sad. What's that song? Don't be... Uh, what's that song? Be happy. Wow. Don't worry, be happy. That's it. Uh, I'm sure I'm a little bit worried here. One, two, three, four. I think I'm just going to come right over the top here. I don't love this, but I just think five-handed ace-queen's a little bit too strong. Uh, we do have pretty good, uh, it's a, it's pretty annoying to run into the, uh, I thought we were going to get a chop. Uh, we do have, um, White Rebuto can definitely be on the light side there. And, uh, yeah, I mean, five-handed ice cream. It, it's kind of an annoying stack depth because, uh, we're just at that point where it's a little bit of a big stack off. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, the stacks are pretty evenly distributed. Uh, I think, actually, we were actually the second shortest stack, right? 
Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I mean, that's all. It's standard. That's pretty standard. What you're going to do? Uh, it does look strong when White Rubito makes that raise, but uh, having played with him quite a bit, I know that he's uh, very capable of raising light there. Um, and uh, I think he's going to make that sort of raise with a lot of uh, ace, suited ace X's, stuff like that. Um, yeah, but I mean, it was kind of a small raise, which was a little bit alarming. Uh, M4, 3. Yeah, I think I will take this one. And we get it through. Yeah, I mean, his raise size was the concern. Not the raise itself, but the size. Yeah, I mean, I just think he can 3-bet there pretty wide. Uh, but this is a very small 3-bet, which is a little bit alarming. But uh, as I've said before, he is capable of some pretty funky stuff. Put the queen down one time. Give us the chip lead. <laughs> yeah, it's a really tough spot, actually, because, you know, I mean, it's just... Yeah, it's just a gross spot. I mean, the raise size is a bit of a deterrent, you know. There he is, three bet folding again. Uh, I mean, he's uh, he plays well and he's he can he has pretty well timed aggression. Uh, the the other concern too is is that poker own you has not been raising much at the final table. Um, so that's definitely a concern. Because uh, he's finally opened up UTG and then the three bet at this stack depth and that amount. Um, but I mean, we have ace queen. It's just, I mean, yeah, it really is. It's just a really tough spot. And I think we're going to have to take this one. I think Pokeronu probably going to call pretty wide just to try and knock us out as well. And he's got the chips where he can. This one's a pretty easy one. It's actually not too bad a hand. Uh, a lot of hands that might call... You know, ace X's and stuff. We do okay against. So, you know, it's just back to chipping up. <laughs> this is how we got there, you know, chipping up, chipping up. Uh, you know, we flopped the nuts before and doubled up, but then we gave it back with the ace queen. Uh, so, back to doing the hard work, just chipping up, chipping up, looking for spots. Unfortunately, we're not going to have much fold equity on a three bet jam. Not just yet, anyway. If we can pick up the blinds and antis a couple more times, we will. That'd be a good situation to be able to get back up to sort of 35,000. Uh, just coming back to aces uh, here, because I just breezed over it. Yeah, we are small blind. I think it's fine. I do think here, if we're big blind, it's actually some merit to just calling. Uh, if we think he can raise fold with a hand, obviously that's strong in this situation. Um, yeah, 